Hey guys, guess who's back? Hi. Greg from the dead. Hi. Is he a real person or is he a ghost or is he? Please don't touch me. I said don't touch. Uh, he seems pretty real. Anyways, let's break down episode five of American Horror Story 1984, Red Dawn. Now off the bat, let's talk about the film's title. An obvious nod to the 1984 film Red Dawn. Mm -hmm. But besides that, the title itself, there was nothing else really that it's referencing for that movie. No, there was no uh, Soviet infiltration of the camp or anything right, like that. Right, yeah. we're just dealing with a messed up camp, and which seems, seems to be haunted and uh, yeah. a purgatory of sorts, but no Maybe. no Soviets like, you know, uh, you know, infiltrating them and, and no, yeah, no, none of that stuff. None of that. Which would have been cool, but also maybe a bit too much stuff going on. Wolverine! So the episode kicks off in 1980. We have mm -hmm. a flashback, of course, like AHS. It wouldn't be AHS without a flashback from something. Yeah. Uh, we kick off with Donna Chambers. She is watching who we thought at first might be like, you know, an ex-husband or something. Yeah. It's her father. Yeah. She's checking in on her dad because her dad's doing some shady stuff. Yes. But she thinks that he's like, cheating on her, on her mom, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it turns out it's much worse than that. I love it. Dark backstory, and this is great character motivation. I love how they peel layers back on this character even more. I didn't expect this, but um, Angelica Ross is doing an awesome job, and I really like that they are going back and giving our characters a little bit more depth than we thought they were going to have at the beginning of this season. So yeah, it was good getting context for another one of the characters, right? Like, we've seen the backstory kind of develop uh, uh, for everyone, mm -hmm. and we know that they've been in involved in some traumatic things, so to see what Dee Dee was going through but prior to all this stuff and kind of why she's obsessed with serial killers. Her father. It's her father, right? And like he had been doing this, let's talk about him for a second. The he had Polaroids been doing this, on the wall. Yeah, his entire life, like, on the DL, no one knew about this. Yeah, I, I loved it, and the fact that this is her motivation. This right. is her drive, and there's no better way to do that than have a family member you find out is a serial killer. Right, and let's talk about how like, grotesque that scene was, right? With like someone's like, that was weird. intestine, like everything kind of falling out of their body. Yeah, I feel like they just had the, the actress go, all right, I'll shake around on the bed, and we'll figure it out later. Uh, it was pretty damn gross. It was. Shout out to Tim Russ, who's playing David, Donna's father, who you'll know if for all my Star Trek fans out there, all my Trekkies, Tuvok from Voyager. Of course I know where I am, Captain. I'm just not sure I know who I am. Now, flash forward back to 1984, mm -hmm. and remember, uh, Rita, aka Donna, had just witnessed uh, Ramirez come back from the, dead, from the dead, and he basically explains to her that Satan, it was Satan's doing. Yeah, I believe him. Yeah, yeah. It's, Pretty clear that uh, there's some supernatural, like satanic things going on with him specifically, and on the camp campground itself. Um, but she she kind of is shocked to even see this. Yeah, because it looked like a respawn from a video game. It the did. last episode where he came back to life. Yeah. Uh, the only way you could chop that up is with Satan. The thing is with that, the whole thing. I keep thinking, man, we just had this last season. Right. With uh, so now we have another kind of Michael Langdon, <laughs> Antichrist character going exactly. Out there. And at this point, I can only assume that Donna is probably like, what did I get myself involved in? Like w now, like like satanic things are going on in front of me. Like it's American it's, horror it's, story. It's it's one thing to have like serial killers and all that kind of stuff, that obsession. But now she's 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 dealing with things that are outside even her expertise. Yeah, it's all over the place. You don't know what to believe in this camp. Is it haunted, the purgatory thing? And also now you throw in Satan is also just taking over the town. Who knows what's happening next? Yeah. Now, one thing that's becoming increasingly clear is that it's almost like as if the campground itself is pushing people into the dark side. Yeah, it's haunted. It's haunted, it's right? Trying it's trying to get you to bring out the worst in you in this camp. Maybe that's what it has to do to get you to stay at this camp. You gotta be just a horrible Indulge person. in some of the and sins. Right before you die. Right, right. And and obviously, in, in addition to that, Donna does have this backstory where her father had that darkness inside of him as well, right? So he's mm -hmm. it, he's basically like, it's, it's in your nature as well. Mm -hmm. That you have this inside of you. It's not just your infatuation and in, in the study of serial killers. Like you actually are one yourself inside. Back to Xavier and the rest of the gang. He is losing it at yep. this point. He wants to burn down the entire forest, like his children of the corn or something. Um, he's he's going a little too far here. So of course someone has to knock him out. It happens to be Margaret. Yeah, and, and he's he's more pissed off about his visual, like his look now, <laughs> that he's no longer this like handsome like. Uh, you know, want to be actor. Now, he, the, the, the reason that he's most pissed off is literally because of his face is disfigured now. Yes, and Cody Fern, <laughs> he gave some great lines in this episode, and I think this might be one of his greatest lines he's ever given to American Horror Story. You want me to break? 
I agreed to fire up a thousand white hot sun. So Brooke, being the smartest one out of the group at this point, uh, she decides let's st all stick together. Yeah. Uh, Margaret wants none of that, so she tries to split them up immediately, saying she has a rowboat. Yeah. Good. Good strategy for Margaret, though, mm -hmm. right? She wants to get everyone one like alone. You know, just to kind of knock them off one at a time, and it's easier for her mm -hmm. to basically kill literally everyone. Um, and poor Chet. Yeah, Montana picks Chet for tribute. Good idea. Chet will go with you. Sure. I believe we have a volunteer. I love that deep down, Chet knows it's a wrap for him at this point. He doesn't yeah. even give a, like, a, a, I'll, be, I'll right be right back. He just looks at him like, I know this is it yeah. for me. Goodbye, everyone. I'll yeah. be back as a ghost. I'll go soon. in the boat alone with Margaret. Sure, it's going to be uh -huh. fine. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Guess who's back? It's Ray. Of course. Who got his head chopped off. They just and like, now he's sure. completely fine. Yep. Ghost. Uh, so he comes back and he hangs out with Brooke. And <laughs> did not see this one coming, guys. Uh, they hook up. I did see it coming. Go back a few episodes ago. <laughs> yeah, he did have. We, we knew he had a thing for Brooke. Um, they had a thing. Brooke, uh, you know, who was the last American virgin in her own words, um, decides to, uh, you know, pick R Ghost Ray yes. as her first partner. Oh. Um, not a good idea for Brooke. When, you know, once you have sex in a lot of these movies, uh, horror movies. That means the end of you. It's so. a wrap. And also in American Horror Story, she had sex with a ghost. Are there any, are there any repercussions for this? I think there are, Greg. I yeah. think Vivian Harmon would like to tell us that there are, certainly are some repercussions for this. Yeah, you do not want to have sex with a ghost of someone who's dead. A human and a mm. ghost, you know, they do make mm -mm. some horrible offspring. Mm -mm. Now, one thing we did notice is that Ghost Ray came back and the last like few minutes of his life- a Little hazy. A little hazy, right? He didn't know exactly what happened. He wasn't aware immediately that he had already died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. The last like four seconds or something. He's like, I was on the bike and then yeah, I was fell off and then what happened? <laughs> but one thing is clear, <laughs> those things, that changes as soon as they open up the fridge and ah. Brooke notices um, Ray's head in the fridge. Why did Jingles bring back Ray's head or Margaret and put it in that fridge? Or Birdie, maybe That's, she's a cannibal. Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, that, that, that pretty much freaks Brooke out and she's like, uh, why did I decide to lose my virginity to you? Uh, what are you? And I love it. I was, it's a I was, great was, little horror twist nod to like the old schlocky horror films where she's just like, what the hell's going on now? Yeah. I just- What like, are you? I, what I are thought you? I found true love yeah. and now I'm looking at a ghost's head in the fridge. So she runs away immediately. <laughs> what are you? Fuck, look, please. No, don't touch me! No. <laughs> Brooke pretty much just pulls off a Kesha, kind of. What are you talking about? Y you know Kesha's ghost story, right? Oh, Ryan Seacrest! Yes. <laughs> Apparently she had sex with a ghost. <laughs> now as for Chet, you can pour one out for him. It's over. His journey in the corporal form might be over. Yeah. He didn't see any body though, so we don't know. To be honest, like he, he made it a pretty far away. Like, he, you know, he, he could have died episodes ago because you know, he got fell into one of those traps and he had a pretty bad wound. And he might he might have been dead already. Who knows? You know, it might be a, a, an argument could be made that he died earlier. Right. Uh, but that said, I feel like there's something going on with his character. I really like his character a lot, by the way, too. And he's doing a much better job because yeah. then what he's doing as the episodes um, go on, go on. I, I think he's his performance is a lot more fun and a lot and it's a lot more believable than it was mm -hmm. in the first few episodes. Um, with that said, more believable, uh, the second that Margaret throws that anchor or whatever the hell it was into the water, I would have grabbed her by her hair oh, and yeah. said, I'm dragging you to hell with me. I don't yeah. know why he just looked at it and then just decided to just go overboard. Yeah, I, I was, it, was, it was pretty weird that, I, I, that a dude of his stature and, you know, he took steroids and he's, he's on his buff guy. Like, yeah, he one hand. He couldn't, he couldn't just grab, hold on to her the whole time. And uh, uh, she would have had to chop off my arm at this point because I'm holding on to something. Like, we're both going down, baby. That's the end of it. But, in a brutal fashion, she rips his ear off. Oh. <laughs> right when he Horrible. holds on to the boat. I love that. <laughs> so 
So Chet is in the lake right now. Uh, what episode is he going to rise out of there like Jason? I'm just, I'm, is it going to be the last episode? Is Margaret going to be out there on the canoe in her last breaths thinking she got away from whatever's going on? Jingles returning to camp, whatever, and then... Chet gets his revenge. Ah! I can see it happening. So Xavier's with Montana and Donna shows up and she basically spills the beans about what actually went on and that she released Jingles into the campground. And rightfully so. Xavier's pissed. Um, I, I think you would be pissed too if you got locked into an oven and it's all her fault. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going after her too at this point. Yeah, totally. And uh, I, the, the, this was a hysterical sequence. Just to, what he, everything, <laughs> that, everything that Cody Fern is delivering here is just so much, so funny. When he says that his future is only in radio and not TV and film because of how he looks. It's your fault I'll never be on the cover of TV Guide. It's your fault my future is in radio. And now we're 20 minutes to sunrise. I laughed when that came up. Same thing. It's been the longest night ever and finally the sunrise is around the corner. I said really? Really? Yeah. Is it really 20 minutes? Let's see here. And I looked at the end of the episode. I thought, okay, maybe they're, they're not lying here. Real time. They're going to try to do this at the end. Yeah. Um, and we finally awesome. get a fun little showdown between Montana and Brooke, right? Montana gets another crack at, at trying to kill Brooke. Uh, mm -hmm. What I've noticed uh, throughout all of these attacks on Brooke is that either the killers are really horrible, uh, Ramirez yep. and, and, and Montana are not good at killing somebody, or nope. Brooke is just like a master of escaping the most crazy situations. She took that boom box and tossed it on Montana and I loved it too. It's so schlocky. <laughs> I absolutely love that entire uh, battle sequence or whatever you want to call that. Yeah. Um, especially the fact that Billy Lord is putting on a great Jack Torrance at yes, this point too. Totally. Like a, a complete like give me the bat kind of thing with Brooke. I yeah. fell in love with this character. Not only, the, not only the dramatics but also just comedically she's really really funny. And uh, Good you know, actors. this showdown, this this fight goes goes on through a few scenes, and, and you know, across a couple a couple locations too. So it's a lot of fun just to have them. It's like revenge the physicality of, the of it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now let's not forget about Montana. From what we learned about her backstory, she feels that you know Ramirez coming into her life at the time that he did it was almost like fate. Mm -hmm. That now she's able to get back at Brooke, which she believes that Brooke is responsible for her brother's death. Her motivations are very clear, and I like the way that they dolt this out too in the episode. The exposition came last. Yeah. You had the imagery first. Uh, that's how you want to do it. And especially for her character, I, I thought it was pretty damn well done. The, the way they have her at the end, her bookend, yeah. for how she goes out. It's pretty damn cool. Then we get a nice little chat between Donna and Jingles. Now apparently Jingles you know, has his little Terminator Mm -hmm. um, wrapping himself, wrapping up. himself yeah. up, cleaning up the wounds. Um, you know, he went to Vietnam, so I'm sure he can take care of himself uh, medically. Um, also, it's weird that a bunch of bullets didn't really kill him, but yeah, it's whatever. okay. But Jingles basically comes clean and, and says everything that he's learned about Margaret that she, you know, she was the one that framed him. Uh, he didn't kill anyone uh, other than in Vietnam and until he showed up at the camp because of Donna. And Donna asked him to just put her out of her misery at this point. And he says, nope. Yeah, he wants to kill Margaret and Margaret only, one mm -hmm. final kill. And there's one thing we got to realize too is that Donna, having heard all this information, she realizes that basically all of her work on this serial killer uh, Mr. Jingles is kind of all fake, right? Mm -hmm. It's not real. None of it was actually true. So basically all of her life's work, uh, you know, about obsessing over Mr. Jingles, mm -hmm. um, there, there's nothing, it's, it's completely hollow. Now Jingles did reveal to her that Margaret killed everyone. Yeah. It was Margaret. She's the real Jingles here. So I wonder if Donna is going to take this information and use it for good or continue this uh, theory she has on serial killers and just, you know, transfer that over to Margaret and follow her around. Yeah. We'll see. So Jingles very easily catches Margaret and is about to kill her, but Xavier shows up and yeah, saves her. Yeah, in a Friday the 13th sleepaway camp type of way. He just takes him out. And again, another great line. When you put me in that oven, you cooked up your worst nightmare, asshole. I absolutely love the fact that he killed him with the bow and arrow after having played Robin Hood in 1979. That was just, obviously he's like a marksman now. Of course. Apparently. Method uh, actor. Yeah, hey. method actor. He takes it very serious. He does, yeah. very seriously. I'm a serious actor. <laughs> so then Xavier does a cool little dance yeah. and it ends up with uh, Margaret killing him, of course. <laughs> Now, two dead bodies on the ground, and we knew that some, they were gonna pop back up, but we only see Jingles pop back up after uh, Ramirez is there and basically asks, you know, do you accept Satan as your savior? 
Yeah. And Jingles was like, hell yes. Like, I, he's going to do anything he can to come back and kill Margaret. So, yeah, I, apparently now both of these two killers are motivated by Satan. And finally, the sun is out, Greg. Uh -huh. The longest night ever is finally over. <laughs> there is a the bus kids are full, here. There's the a bus, kids are here. There's a bus full of young kids that are just singing their hearts out, just so happy. Margaret wasn't lying. Kids were going yeah. to go to there that camp. Oh my God. kids coming to the camp. Uh, <laughs> But unfortunately, they show up right when Brooke is stabbing Montana to death in self-defense, but it doesn't look too good. I love that scene. Yeah, that was hysterical. They're all just screaming after they see Brooke with <laughs> blood everywhere. Um, and then the cops show up and basically clean everything up. And you're like, wow, this kind of wrapped up pretty quickly. All right, so Brooke goes to jail. Cool little twist on that. Yep. Margaret, the killer, survives. She's going to just live gets on. Gets away. Yep, she gets away. And um, I, I liked it. Xavier was a really strong character. And then Check the credits the roll. Yeah, good season. That's it. Great. This, we're only halfway through. Oh, God. What it do, baby? Yeah. Now we get a fun little sequence with Ghost Ray. He's kind of wandering around, like, what the hell's going on? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're checking his vitals, and there's no blood pressure or pulse or anything. Yeah. And, of course, in a, like, Violet Harmon kind of way, he's stuck there. He's not going anywhere. This is murder house all over again. It was a cool sequence of seeing the ambulance kind of drive off, and then he just kind of wakes back up in the middle of the he road. He figures it out. He figures it out that he's stuck, that he cannot leave. And then we see Jonas kind of confirm that, like, uh -huh. hey, this is your new home. I hope that Jonas is probably going to dole out some uh, exposition the next episode and yeah. tell all the other ghosts what's going on, um, but who knows? One thing's for this. sure, though, Montana <laughs> seems to enjoy the new gig, of right? Of course. <laughs> of course Montana does, and, and she may, has a funny Ghostbusters, a really fun Ghostbusters reference. The second time we've, we've heard the Ghostbusters reference come in in this season. There is no Montana. Only Zul. Oh, Zuli, you nut now. Come on. Ghostbusters in 1984, it came out like in June. And we know the Olympics were in July to August, so this it's is right fresh. around the time that it's fresh in their memory. So anything that's Ghostbusters, I'm, I'm here for. <laughs> All right, so we now have the Night Stalker yep. and uh, Benjamin Ricker. Not the, he is not Mr. Jingles. Mm -hmm. It's not him. It's, it's Margaret. Fake. They are on the road back to L.A. where the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, can continue his killing spree in L.A. For, uh, what, for Benjamin, I have no idea what he's going to be doing from here on out. But Tag team. Yeah, they're right. teaming up. <laughs> now let's talk about some questions, some theories, some predictions that we have moving forward. It's very possible that Camp Redwood seems to be a sort of purgatory for these characters. Mm -hmm. uh, Curse Land, uh, not too different from Murder House. Uh, or even uh, Hotel Cortez. Um, Roanoke. Yep, Roanoke. I, I, I feel like they're, they're just going that route and they're not gonna really explain it any further than that. And then Montana even kind of says that too. She, she, she even says like this is some sort of purgatory yeah. and all that fun stuff. So, uh, we, you know, we, we saw this kind of a few episodes back. We kind of we predicted this, but... But what are the rules? What, yeah, they took, it'd be awesome to kind of get some more context into how it all works and what started it, yeah. the origins of this. Does Chet come back? Or not is is did, because he didn't give his give himself up to the Lord or the devil. He's not coming back. There. Well, that's my other question. So it leads off to how did Jingles and or actually Benjamin Richter, as you said, and uh, Richard Ramirez, how were they able to escape the campground? Satan. Is it because Satan? Satan. That, so I guess if you accept Satan as your savior, then you're then able to uh, the go Lord free of the curse. And if in, of the land itself, and, and if not, then you're gonna stuck on the on, on the land, and you're just gonna be, basically haunt that place for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Now, what about Margaret? Is she really this like you know all good savior? Because I think I like the shot we had early on of the the horns behind her, little mm -hmm. devil lady. Uh, I wonder if she's actually a Satan herself, and she's just bringing everyone back. She seems to enjoy the killing, mm -hmm. but is 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 she? She believes she's cleansing, you know, people that are are filled with sin. Okay. So the people that she's killed, did, were they deserving of these these punishments? Do they deserve to go, go in some sort of purgatory for what they've done in the, in, in the past? God judges the righteous and the wicked. For when the cold hand of death squeezes the last breath from your lungs, it'll be too late to ask for forgiveness. And what about Donna and Brooke? Is Donna going to help out Brooke here and get her out of jail? I'm, I'm thinking no. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, a no. I don't think so either, because no one's gonna really gonna believe Brooke, right? Mm -mm. Uh, the only witnesses that she has to the truth are now ghosts yeah. on the campground itself. Like, like Ray, Ray would be the only one that she could, they could talk to and say, hey, you know, this is what was really going on. 
but mm, they're all stuck at the campground. Yeah. No one's going to believe them. And then Donna, I feel like she's closer to helping Margaret than she is helping Brooke, so we'll see where that goes. Now, spoilers for episode six. If you didn't see that preview yet, um, there's a few things that pop up that makes me wonder, are we going to see Hotel Cortez? I think that'd be a really fun tie-in for the 100th episode ever of American Horror Story. Some kind of tie-in. Yeah. If we see him at least go to the hotel, maybe we get just 30 seconds of Evan Peters as James March in the background I somewhere. Marsh. I feel like that's the thing. I wonder if you're going to go there, you would need to have Evan Peters show yeah, you'd up, have right? To. You'd have to. You just have to, uh, even though Dennis O'Hara could show up too, and that would be awesome if he does yeah, make a cameo. Totally, but one thing's for sure is, is Ramirez is headed for more and more kills when he goes back to the LA area, right? Yes. We're gonna see a bunch of that, but I, but like we brought up earlier, not sure exactly uh, Benjamin Richter is like what his role will be alongside. Does he help? Does he help Ramirez, or does he just try to go hunt down Margaret? I don't think he cares about Margaret because he would have stayed there at the park. He he didn't. He left. I, don't, I think he's done with that story arc. I don't know where he goes from there. Interesting to see where he goes next. You can't kill every single person that wanders through here. Yes, I can. You can. Uh, we also get some more shots on the campground itself. We're not completely leaving the campground. Obviously, um, a lot of our characters are still stuck there. So. Margaret, Xavier, <laughs> Ray, post-death, yeah. how they interact with each other and all these new people that are showing up. Now, my question to you is, why are people still showing up at this campground after I, everything's happened? I don't know, but it looks like we're getting a time jump or something because they have different clothes too. Yeah. And then at the same time, it feels like we're having like four or five different plots to jump into the story at this point. I don't know where we're going, but I'm digging it because I'm a huge fan of Roanoke and it feels a lot like we're going down that Roanoke side now. You had your first story, now it's time for the last five or four episodes or whatever's going on Totally. Here. It does remind me a little bit of, of Murder House and how um, to, to see how the ghosts interact with the living like on, on the campground itself, right? Mm -hmm. And see what roles different of these, of these characters they take. It seems that Montana and Xavier start to enjoy killing, and basically they're like gods in this, as she says, they're gods in this campground. But they can't be the only ghosts there. No, oh. there's gotta be others. So it's interesting, it'd be fun to get introduced to like the newer, um, other characters are gonna be involved in this area. And then to see, you know, other roles like Ray, where he's like a little bit like, guys, we can't kill innocent people, like what are we doing here? Um, it'll be fun to see how those, they interact with the living mm -hmm. when more and more people come to the campground. My only question still, I don't know why anyone's showing up to this campground after what happened in, uh, way back in the day in the 70s and now what happened uh, in 18, 1984. It looks like, again, something like Roanoke where a group of people are coming to the camp now as a like, oh, this is, you know, this is like we get this every season for AHS That's where right. someone comes up and we're like, oh, this used to be this evil campground. Yeah, because you Let's have that. sex or something <laughs> stupid. They exactly. do something on the ground and then the ghosts show up and kill them. That's a great point because you saw the guy with, with, the, with camera. the camera. So it looks uh -huh. like maybe a tourist, maybe, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, s studying what happened years in the past, a journalist type thing. Yep. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's bad news for anyone who, who sets foot on that campground, we know that for sure. All right, that'll do it for us this week. Of course, we'll be back next week with another breakdown, but we wanna know what you guys think. Hit us up in the comments below. Yes, uh, I love this episode. I thought it was kinda like Roanoke. I really like Roanoke, so I have a feeling that, oh, uh-oh, here we go. The comments are gonna be fun this week. Bye, everyone. Bye.